Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Roku Roku, The Promise of the Witch, a Japanese horror anthology from 2017 that was directed by Yudai Yamaguchi and Keita Amamiya. Now if those names sound vaguely familiar to you, it's because Yamaguchi previously directed movies like Battlefield Baseball, Meatball Machine, Tamami the Baby's Curse, Yakuza Weapon, etc. And Amamiya previously directed stuff like the Zero movies from the early 90s, as well as Moon Over Tao and the Garo films. Now, Roku Roku is my most highly anticipated Japanese horror film from the past, like, five years. And it's still actually quite difficult to find. But there was recently an impromptu screening on Facebook that I happened to catch at the last second. Uh, and I got to see it with English subtitles on there. And there was only one screening. And then I was also able to find the Japanese Blu-ray release on Amazon Japan. But it was very expensive. But I, I had to do it. <laughs> I had to do it. And that does not have English subs. So it's difficult to, to come by right now. But it's a film that I wanted to review because I want you people to put it on your radar for future viewing. Okay, if it becomes available. If it sounds interesting to you. Now this is an anthology of nine short films and then one longer wraparound story. It has a total runtime of only 91 minutes. So these individual short films, I didn't time them necessarily, but they average maybe five to seven minutes each, with the longer wraparound segment constantly weaving in between them. You know, sometimes horror anthologies will have a wraparound where it starts at the beginning of the film, then you get all the short films, and then the wraparound ends it, like bookends. That's not what this one does. You know, the wraparound segment, you keep revisiting it throughout the film, which is kind of neat. And, uh, and then you have an extended finale dedicated to the, the main story of the film. Now, there are some other Japanese horror anthologies out there that may come to mind. Stuff like Tales of Terror from Tokyo, or, um, you know, that deals with supernatural stuff. Or you have Torihara or Hirokoa, which focus on human psychopaths. Roku Roku is very different from those because this one focuses on Japanese yokai monsters. And we get a nice variety here. Um, I'm not going to tell you which ones appear, because it's best to go into this blind. Don't even watch the trailer, because they reveal most of them in the trailer. Uh, but needless to say, there is a lot of creativity in this, in terms of monster designs. And um, you know, you'll see some monsters here that you've never seen before in any other film. And let's be honest, we'll probably never see some of these things again in a movie. So it's, it's outlandish stuff that you're not going to see anywhere else. So it definitely carves out its own identity and therefore earns some pretty huge brownie points for me. Now, like every other anthology, there's going to be some segments here that are better than others or that you'll like more than others. But to be honest, I liked basically every segment in this anthology, even the weaker ones. But then again, this type of thing is like right up my freaking alley. Now, in, what basically happens in each story right, is that in this terms of story and characters, I mean, this it's just wafer-thin story and characters, all right? You're not going to get much story or character development in a five to seven minute short film, correct? And even the longer wraparound segment, it's pretty basic. So if you're someone who, like, absolutely needs a compelling story and characters in all of your films, you probably won't like this film. For me, I just don't care in this case. You know, it's similar to reading, like, a compilation book, on Japanese yokai monsters. You know what I mean? You get a nice variety. And most of the compilation books I've read on yokai monsters, they're like legends that have limited information on them. So they're only like a few pages long. They're stories. And they're just enough to fill like a 10 minute short film anyway. So, you know, it's, it uh, facilitates your imagination. It's like sitting around a campfire and telling short stories to each other. So that's why, you know, this is some good stuff for me. Now, I love high contrast visuals really help to make everything pop more in this. You know, like, uh, the blacks are darker, the whites are brighter, you know, the colors are kind of more colorful. A lot of horror films like to mute the colors and drain them out, but that's not the case here. Uh, even the scenes where that have black and white as the primary color schemes uh, really pop, and you'll see that in the film. Actually, the thumbnail for this video uh, will show you a little bit of that. It almost looks like the whites glow in the dark, which is pretty cool. Now, personally, I think <laughs> I think this film 
is extremely entertaining from what I've said. I mean, you got, it moves at a very fast pace. Every five to seven minutes, you got a new monster showing up. You know what I mean? The wraparound is pretty insane, you know, especially when you get to the end. I mean, it's just like, this is, uh, you just don't see this stuff in movies. It's, it's, it's so nutty and outlandish that most people don't have the balls to, like, do this in a movie. Um... So yeah, the pacing's really good. I'm constantly entertained. Very easy to sit through. And I've already watched my Japanese Blu-ray without the subs. And I can guarantee you that I'm watching this film, like, every October. Every single October for the rest of my life, as long as I have the Blu-ray, I'm going to be watching this. Just because it's just, it's 90 minutes of just pure entertainment from a horror standpoint. But again, if you want, if you want your deep characters and storylines, you ain't gonna like it, all right? So if you're a fan of Japanese horror anthologies, like the ones I mentioned, you, you'll, you definitely need to check this out when you can. So, yeah, I, I strongly recommend this if you think it's up your alley. And, uh, you know, take a look out for it. I gotta assume somebody's gonna pick this up eventually to either get a streaming release like on Amazon or at least some type of physical media release at some point in the future. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, check this one out. And as always, I will see you next time.